Hey, can I tell you something personal? In the work I do as a pastor, caregiver, and consultant, people tell me things they don't feel they can tell anyone else. And that's really good news for you because you're in relationships with them. Hey everyone, John Pavlovitz here, and for the past two and a half decades, I've worked alongside thousands of people on the front lines of relational conflict and help them find better ways to engage those they don't agree with, to stay connected to people without sacrificing authenticity. In the previous videos in this series, which you can see below, we've been talking about the people that we don't get along with, the people who make us uncomfortable, even the people we don't like but are trying really hard to love. I introduced you to story-based life skills, an empathy-centered approach to interpersonal conflict and to interacting with people you disagree with, whether in person or online. We talked about the importance of being a student of other people, about having a curiosity about each person's specific journey so that we might be better able to understand them and to more strategically navigate the disconnects between us. We began that process with the critical admission that we can always know people better than we currently do, even if we think we know them pretty well. Often when I meet people in my travels on speaking tours, we don't necessarily have a lot of time together. They might come up before or after a talk, tell me something deeply personal, and in a quick moment, and without knowing any of their backstory, they're hoping I can give them something that they can take home with them to help them. If I only had a few minutes with you to help you equip yourself for the relational turbulence you're currently in right now and will be for the rest of your life, here's the one thing I'd share with you. Look for the fears and false stories. Find out what people are afraid of and why and try to figure out why those fears might be misplaced. When we're in conflict with other people, whether we're debating politics or religion, finances, or work problems, parenting issues, or strong opinions on any topic, the other person is almost always afraid of something. And that fear drives them and us to hold or defend a certain position. A father of four is afraid that his family will lose their health care. A man who has experienced religious discrimination is afraid of others experiencing the same thing. A member of our family is afraid they're not being heard by us. A teenager is afraid of the damage climate change is doing to the planet. A couple is afraid their jobs will be moved overseas. An elderly woman is afraid that she will be forgotten. People's fears will manifest in the politicians they support the religious beliefs they hold, the way they respond to adversity. And part of the job of being kinder humans is trying to uncover people's fears and validate them because no one is at their best when they're terrified. Over the next couple of days, try looking for the fear and false stories and see if that doesn't change how you interact with people. If you'd like some specific strategies for discovering the fears and false stories out there, you can do so in my new online course called Being Kind Humans. We're launching in just a few days, so stay tuned for details on that. In my next video of this series, I'm going to fly us up to 30,000 feet and help you get a picture for how to implement story-based life skills into your relationships right now so that you'll have all the tools you need to be kinder humans. Thanks for watching and be kind out there. Oh,